United States. Inflation outside from food and energy, uh, a key measure of, uh, that economists use, also fell. Make no mistake, prices are still too high. We have a lot more work to do, but things are getting better, headed in the right direction. Most Americans can see the progress driving down the street, finding relief at the pump as gas prices fall. Gas prices are now lower than they were a year ago, and half the gas stations selling gas at, are selling gas at $3.09 or less. The most common price for gas stations across the country is $2.99. The decline in gas prices is giving consumers a break. They need helping them keep uh, our economy going. We have a two-car family, they're saving hundreds of dollars a month. It's a big deal. Today's report contains another piece of good news. Food inflation slowed last month, providing much-needed relief for millions of families at the grocery store. This is welcome news for families across the country as they get ready for the holiday celebrations and for family dinners. It's also important that we put today's news in a broader context. When I took office, we inherited a nation with a pandemic raging and an economy that was reeling. We acted quickly and boldly to vaccinate the country and to put in place a, a new economic strategy, a strategy built on an economy that was based on from the bottom up and the middle out. Now, 21 months later, we can see how our, our economic plan is working. We've added every single month, every single month of my presidency, we've added jobs total of 10,500,000 new jobs. 750,000 of them are manufacturing jobs. Where is it written, as I've heard me say it before, and I apologize for repeating it, where is it written that America can't lead the world again, once again, in manufacturing? And by the way, remember I talked to, at length about the need to continue to invest in research and development. Look what's going on, on from the Department of Energy and the nuclear front. There's a lot of good news on the horizon. The unemployment rate is down to 6.4 percent when I was sworn in, down from 6.4 percent when I was sworn in. It's now 3.7 percent, near a 50-year low. We've done all of this while lowering the federal deficit in the two years we've been in office, $1.7 trillion. Let me say that again, $1.7 trillion. We've lowered the federal debt. No administration has ever cut that, the deficit that much. Now, inflation is coming down as well. Prices of things like televisions and toys are going down. It's good news for the holiday season. Used car prices fell for the fifth month in a row. New car prices didn't go up this month. That savings is critical to so many families. It gives them just a little bit of breathing room for the holiday season. And all of this means that for the last several months, wages have gone up more than prices have gone up. Wages have gone up more than prices have gone up. I want to be clear, it's going to take time to get inflation back to normal levels as we make the transition to a more stable and steady growth. But we could see setbacks along the way as well. We shouldn't take anything for granted. But what is clear is that my economic plan is working and we're just getting started. My goal is simple, get price increases under control without choking off economic growth. Bring inflation down while keeping our labor market resilient. Build an economy from the bottom up and the middle out, an economy with good jobs, good wages, and for the long run, not a boom or bust economy. Because of my plan, we're beginning to see historic investments that are leading companies to invest hundreds of billions of dollars. Let me say it again, hundreds of billions of dollars to build semiconductor factories and other advanced manufacturing right here in America. It's going to create tens of thousands of good-paying jobs in the years ahead. And by the way, a significant number of these jobs are expected to be jobs that pay an average of $125,000 a year. Many don't require a college degree, so things are looking up. So what's next? Because of my plan, we're taking powerful interest to lower powerful actions to lower prescription drug costs and health insurance premiums and energy bills. In just a few weeks, starting in January, families will get a little more breathing room. They've been told for some time since we passed the legislation that we're going to be able to lower the price of drugs. Let me give you just one example. Coming January 1, seniors with diabetes on Medicare are going to pay no more than $35 a month for a prescription of insulin. As up to now, they've been paying as much as $400 a month. 
That's a genuine savings for seniors. This matters so many families with loved ones who have diabetes and rely on insulin to survive, going from an average of $400 down to $15 or $35 a month. In January, they won't have to choose between paying their insulin, paying for their insulin, and in many cases, putting food on the table. It matters. It's real savings to people, and it's just about to kick in. The same is true from health care to clean energy. By taking action, we're making real progress in strengthening and stabilizing our economy, giving Americans across the country some breathing room in the process. Look, I know it's been a rough few years for hardworking Americans and for small businesses as well. And for a lot of folks, things are still pretty rough. But they're bright spots all across America where we're beginning to see the impact of our economic strategy. And we're just getting started. I've said it again, I've never been more optimistic about America's future. And today's news gives me another reason to be optimistic about that future. We're building a better America, an economy from the bottom up and the middle out, not the top down. When the, when the poor have a shot, middle class do well, the wealthy always do very well. We just have to keep going. I know we can get this done. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops, and I'll take questions. I, I'm going to be seeing you all a little later this afternoon. I'm not taking any questions right now. Thank you very much. Can you say when you expect prices to get back to normal, Mr. President? I hope by the end of next year we're much closer, but I can't make that prediction. I just, I'm convinced they're not going to go up. I'm convinced they're going to continue to that. Do you plan to veto the NDAA over the VAX requirement? All right, President Biden there uh, delivering the news that we've been reporting all morning long. Uh, stronger than expected inflation numbers, inflation coming down in the United States. You heard the president there talk about uh, the plans that he uh, hopes will continue to bring inflation levels down in this country. At the end, you heard a reporter ask if uh, prices were going to continue to go down. The president can't predict it, of course, but he uh, says that he hopes that uh, by the end of next year, which is what economists are saying, too. Uh, we heard Janet Yellen in that interview with Nora O'Donnell for 60 Minutes uh, say, echo much uh, the same sentiment, that uh, the intention is as the Federal Reserve continues to raise interest rates, which we expect that they will do again, that that will continue to drive inflation numbers down. Um, and the good news, of course, is that the job market is, is still very, very strong. So let's bring in Ed O'Keefe, our White House and political correspondent. He's standing outside of the White House, uh, was listening into what the president had to say. Ed, uh, November CPI report uh, came out today as we've been reporting. Inflation is still high, but is slowing down. These numbers were better than expected. The market is up. You heard the president of the United States there uh, responding to those latest figures. Yeah, this is uh, good news for this White House, which, of course, has made inflation one of its top domestic priorities this year, certainly its top economic priority. And as he said, over five months now, the prices have been easing off. They are still high, uh, especially for food, if you look at the latest figures. But coming down two tenths of a percentage points below what economists had predicted, when you take out gas, for example, it goes down to about a 6% overall increase, which was still lower than what economists had predicted. So signs that things are starting to ease off. And a day before, the Federal Reserve, which of course the president has no control over, is expected to raise interest rates uh, yet again, to help ease those prices even more. You heard him also say, as you mentioned, Vlad, hoping that by the end of next year, uh, the, the, the pain of all this is gone, the economic pain, mirroring what the Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen had said as well. Uh, but make no mistake, amid a month now, or at least the last three or four weeks of good news, uh, they can add this encouraging sign uh, that, again, still causes great pain and uncertainty, especially around the holidays for many Americans, uh, but from a from a numerical, statistical, and political standpoint here at the White House, they're going to be quite happy about this. You know, you mentioned the Federal Reserve. The expectation is that uh, there's going to be another hike, probably half a percentage point, based on what the Federal Reserve has been forecasting to us. But, you know, with each hike, there always comes the question of whether or not the Fed is going a little too far, whether or right. not we're going to dip into a recession. I wonder if you've heard any of those concerns coming out of the White House. Oh, they're, they're of course concerned, but again, this is one of those agencies and entities that they have no control over. It's in the hands uh, of, of the central bankers. Uh, they're anticipating here, as everyone else is, that, that half a point percentage increase, anything less or more than that would be seen as confusing. 
and unexpected. And, and so as long as that uh, plays out as it is expected to, uh, and the White House isn't expected to say much at all about it. Uh, but it, it is certainly uh, one aspect of this ongoing economic uh, challenge that the White House has faced, that they don't control that. Uh, and of course, uh, we're projecting their hope that there would be steps taken, as there have been now over the last several months, to raise those rates. This afternoon, Ed, as you know, the president will host a ceremony on the South Lawn to sign the Respect for Marriage Act. Uh, who will be in attendance, and is he expected to deliver any remarks? He is going to be speaking to thousands of invited guests on the South Lawn or the backyard here at the White House for one of the biggest uh, bill signings he's had. They like to do it big and bold when it is a piece of legislation like this. Remember, this is a, vice, this is a president who, as vice president, went out ahead of the sitting president at the time, Barack Obama, and endorsed uh, same-sex marriage or said he was supportive of it. This legislation is, in essence, designed to serve as a safety valve in the event that the Supreme Court were to ever strike down the court cases that, for now at least, provide federal protections for same-sex and interracial marriages. It requires states that may not have such protections to recognize those from other states. And that, in essence, puts the protections in place um, and, and then essentially requires the federal government to also recognize those marriage licenses issued by states to either same-sex or uh, interracial couples were there to be some issue with those ones. This is something that, of course, was sought in the wake of the Roe v. Wade decision out of concern that at some point the high court might also go after those privacy protections, in essence, that permit uh, same-sex and interracial marriages to continue free of any such legislation. Uh, expect to see a bipartisan crowd. And the White House keeps teasing us about some musicians who are going to be performing, refusing to tell us who exactly they are, saying those performers will announce their participation shortly before the bill signing. So we'll see who exactly shows up here to perform uh, ahead of the president signing legislation. But again, expect it to be a pretty big affair out on the backyard. Mm, star studded. Okay. Oh, what happened? Ed, uh, it's I thought gone, it's, gone, it's gone dark. On us. It's dark, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. go. He's back. There you're back. The All lights right. are back. Uh, Ed, thank you very much. Take care. <laughs> uh, still to come, more changes are on the way at Twitter. We're going to tell you about the board. Uh, he is reportedly abolishing. Elon Musk is reportedly abolishing at the social media giant. So stay with us. You're streaming CBS News.